a strong dollar is in the interest of the United States. That's the statement we hear so often from the U.S. Treasury Secretary. It almost seems like it's part of the job description to be able to utter those words. Why isn't the dollar any stronger then? Maybe it's because words need to be backed by action. I was asked a couple of days ago by Bloomberg Radio on what I'd like to have Bernanke, the Fed chairman, say about the dollar to support the dollar. And my answer was, well, we have heard enough talk. We need to see some action. In particular, let's have a look what the actions have been and why I believe we need to have actions that actually support a strong dollar, unlike just uttering the words. At the Federal Reserve level, we've been printing a lot of money. When you produce more gadgets, the price of those gadgets is lower. You increase the supply. Well, if that gadget is currency, if it's the U.S. dollar, if we print more U.S. dollars, the value of these dollars is lower. If you want a stronger dollar, well, print less money. Or even do the opposite, mop up the liquidity. Destroy some of that liquidity that you have created. That doesn't seem to be the interest in the interest of the Federal Reserve. It goes beyond that, though. When the government, the Federal Reserve in particular, starts buying government bonds, mortgage-backed securities, these securities are now intentionally overvalued. So why would a rational investor, be that foreign or domestic, buy those securities? The Fed's actions ac actively drive down the value of the U.S. dollar. Taking it a step further, why not just allow market prices to govern what the price should be of government bonds, of mortgage-backed securities? Indeed, if that were allowed to happen, interest rates might go up, home prices may come down, but consumers would be forced to save more, and as a result, the dollar might just strengthen. That would be a strong dollar policy. Or even in isolation. If interest rates were a little higher, not near zero, then that may support the dollar. It is very difficult to argue that a near zero policy is fostering a strong dollar. One of the trump cards that Treasury Secretary Geithner and others have why the U.S. is pursuing a strong dollar policy is that the current account deficit has been shrinking. Indeed, over the past year, the current account deficit has come down from some very, in our view, extreme levels. Well, the reason the current account deficit, however, has gone down is not because of policies that foster savings and investments, but because imports have been declining rather rapidly because of the deteriorating economy. The current account deficit is exactly the amount foreigners need to buy in US dollar denominated assets to keep the currency from falling. Currently about $2 billion every single business day. And that is part of the reason why the Federal Reserve is pushing for so much growth. An economy that is growing is more likely to attract money from abroad. So any region um, the U.S. in particular, but the other reasons, regions in the world as well, such as New Zealand, for example, um, that has a very strong current account deficit, they desperately need growth to support these deficits. In the absence of growth, the currency is likely to plunge. In contrast, if you look at the Eurozone or Japan, they don't need to finance their deficits from abroad. The economies there are reasonably in balance, so a weaker economy does not automatically uh, mean a weaker um, currency. If a current account deficit, or the current account in general, is so important with regard to your currency, why not simply encourage policies that reduce that current account deficit? The best way to do that is to encourage policies that foster savings and investment, and not to be dependent on financing from abroad. That means on the fiscal side, the government spending side, also show more restraint. How do you encourage more savings and investment? Well, take, for example, the deductibility of expenses. In most corporations, expenses cannot be expensed the first year round, but have to be amortized over years, if not decades. You get a boost to the housing market if you can expense all the investment into housing. Uh, you do not achieve that with a cash for clunkers program that is mostly expensive. Similarly, if you were to simplify regulation, for example, you would encourage greater investment, not by making it more difficult to invest. On the fiscal side, if we were spending less money, that may also be a positive for the dollar. Now, the absolute level of government debt is very difficult to correlate to the price of currencies. That's because government debt is a balance sheet item, whereas prices are set by supply and demand. That's a cash flow item. Having said that, the interest cost to finance the deficits does factor in into the value of a currency. Incidentally, 
the US government has been running the equivalent of an adjustable rate mortgage financing a great chunk of its debt with very short-term borrowing. In recent weeks, the Treasury has embarked on a project to try to lengthen that duration. Now, some good may come out of it because that may drive up the cost of borrowing and as a result may encourage more savings and investment. But right now, the, the main encouragement to invest in the US seems to be the weaker currency. Because prices have plunged so far when denominated in foreign currency, the US seems to be a more attractive place to invest. That can barely be a sustainable policy. As far as the fiscal spending is concerned, we bicker about, about the policies from the left and the right, and some of us hope that in the midterm election we might get gridlock in Congress so there will be less spending. But note that may only affect the discretionary spending part. The real issues, entitlement payments, are unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. The ultimate strong currency you might get by moving to a gold standard or a modern variation thereof. When you take away the power to inflate your way out of every single problem, which seems to be the cause of least resistance uh, with any government. We manage the Merck Hart and Asian Currency Fund as well as the Absolute Return Currency Fund. Please visit our website to learn more about them. Subscribe to our newsletter and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon on one of these videos. I'm Axel Merck, the Portfolio Manager of the Merck Mutual Funds.